Okay, hello, welcome everyone. I'm gonna talk briefly about the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. So this is like a macroeconomics topic. If we're thinking about an ordinary product or an ordinary good or service, we are going to use the supply and demand model to indicate or to, to model whatever would happen in that market. If we're talking about the economy as a whole, the entire collection of all the products produced and consumed, we have to use the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. And so that's this picture. It's gonna be a little bit different, has some of the same intuition. We're gonna have a quantity on the horizontal axis. We're gonna have a price on the vertical axis, but the quantity is gonna be output, real GDP. The price is gonna be a price index. So I've got the consumer price index. It might be the producer price index or GDP deflator or something like that. Aggregate supply is gonna basically capture all the costs of doing business in that economy. And aggregate demand is gonna reflect basically the things that go into GDP. So I've got this below, our, well, this is gonna be our equilibrium price level. This is gonna be our equilibrium GDP. This would be like the full employment outcome. When we're, when we're in equilibrium and there's no recession, there's no, there's no um, economic expansion. Things that would shift aggregate demand are basically the GDP components. So GDP is comprised of consumption, government spending, investment and net exports, or C plus G plus I plus NX. So anything that would change consumption, government spending, investment, or net exports would shift aggregate demand left to right. So think about like fiscal policy. If the government raises tax rates, that would that would decrease consumption, maybe decrease investment if it was on biz if it's on business, less disposable income, that would shift aggregate demand to the left. If the government would increase government spending, that would directly affect G, that'd be shifting aggregate demand to the right. Then we'd be interested in like what happens to this crossing point, what happens to the to uh, quantity in, in the new equilibrium. And I'll talk about that in a second. What affects aggregate supply? It's basically like there's a whole collection of things, but they can be summed up as things that affect the cost of business in the economy. So this would be like regulations, business taxes, it could be the price of important inputs that go through almost every product, such as like oil is going to affect is going to affect supply of a lot of products, at least through like transportation costs. If we get an increase in aggregate demand, suppose there is a decrease in taxes that would increase consumption, maybe increase investment. Suppose there's a decrease in interest rates that would increase investment. Suppose government spending increased. Any of those things could cause aggregate demand to shift to the right. We'd get a higher output, we'd get a higher price level. This increase in price level is indicative of inflation. This increase in output means that we're gonna need more workers to be able to produce those things. We get a fall in unemployment. So an increase in aggregate demand causes an increase in output. Right? This would actually be called an expansionary or an inflationary gap because this is much larger than the full employment equilibrium. This is the long run aggregate supply curve, which would tell us where the, where the sort of natural state of the economy would be if it's at that equilibrium. We get a rise in the price level that was inflation. Here's like the economy overheating. The, prescript, the policy prescription here would be maybe the, maybe the central bank raises interest rates or the government reduces spending or raises taxes. If we get a decrease in aggregate demand, we'll get a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve. Now we get a decrease in output. This would be a recessionary gap. This is like what happens if there's a if there's a recession caused by a decrease in aggregate demand. We get a lower output, which means we need to employ fewer people and fewer machines to be able to produce those things. We get a rise in unemployment. It's actually helpful to think of unemployment as not just humans, but also like resources and factories as well. It's when there's less output, there's less demand for workers and for factory implements and stuff like that. Uh, what about what happens with price? We get a decrease in the price level. So that's deflation. Deflation is actually like you see that during the Great Recession in small parts. And you saw that in, in sort of like on a massive scale in the Great Depression. It's actually uh, one of the things that makes the, made the, the Great Depression as bad as it was. Uh, so this is recessionary is when we have a decrease in aggregate demand. Okay, what if we get a decrease in aggregate supply? What if we have a, a raise in the cost of doing business generally, like raising regulations or higher business taxes across everything, or an increase in the price of oil that affects a lot of the supply of a lot of goods. That'd be a leftward shift of aggregate supply curve. This is actually really bad because now we've got an increase in the price level, which is inflation. We got a fall in output. So we're gonna have an, a rise in unemployment. So here we have inflation rising, unemployment rising. We call this stagflation. It's a really difficult situation for policymakers to deal with. And actually maybe the classical approach might be best, which is to allow the economy to self-correct because any type of policy thing that's, any type of policy approach would typically, to solve a recession, typically involves increasing aggregate demand. Here that's gonna make inflation worse. So anyway, uh, 
suppose we have an increase in aggregate supply. If we have an increase in aggregate supply, something that's reducing the cost of doing business or like repealed regulations or whatever is the case, we're going to get a fall in the price level. We're going to increase in output and a fall in unemployment. So we're going to have an increase in output, which means greater demand for workers, which means unemployment falls. So that would happen with an increase in aggregate supply in the short run. And of these, of the four pictures, this one's a little bit, I, I, I would say it's a little bit less, uh, less typical. So then the last question is, especially relative to a policy decision of increasing aggregate demand or through decreasing interest rates or increasing government spending or reducing taxes, do we get a large or small effect? And partially, this depends on the slope of the short-run aggregate supply curve. And it depends on your macroeconomic theory that you have in mind to describe the economy. If you believe short-run aggregate supply is relatively vertical, then if we cut interest rates, if we increase government spending, if we cut taxes, we'll get a rightward shift of aggregate demand, and that should have very little effect on output and should have a big effect on inflation. That's bad. If you believe that the short run aggregate supply curve is relatively flat, you can do those things, raise in, or reduce interest rates, raise government spending, reduce taxes, and you get a massive increase in aggregate demand, big increase in output with very little increase in inflation. And so, so then it looks like policy can affect economic output without having a major cost in terms of imposing inflation. This actually is kind of descriptive of what the U.S. economy looked like in the wake of the Great Recession. So coming out of, out of 2009 into about 2016, we have an increase in aggregate demand. We have the economic recovery without a whole lot of inflation. So massive increase in, in output, decrease in unemployment with very little inflation. More recently, policymakers were worried that we were getting into this area so that if we continue expanding, such as with tax cuts and increase in spending, that maybe we'd start seeing inflation. We actually never really saw th this type of inflation, but at least this was the worry. And so the Fed originally raised interest rates to sort of shift us back, shift the aggregate demand uh, leftward to counterbalance any possible inflation. But this picture would be the motivation for why that would be an issue. We think maybe further increases in aggregate demand are going to cause very little change in output, but big change in inflation, which would be bad. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.